You can always tell a man by his wristwatch and his shoes. <laughs> Welcome back to What's On Watches and welcome to our brand new YouTube series, A Moment Of Your Time. I'm Thomas Watts and today we have a very special guest. Ignore at your peril, the man himself, Nigel Cleaver. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you, Tom. So, Nigel, you run a very famous luxury menswear page called Ignore at Your Peril. What inspired you to go into that? It's quite a, quite a simple answer to that. Okay. I'll try and keep it quite short. Yeah, the key thing for me was my grandfather and my father. Um, Granddad Fred worked for Rolls Royce right. uh, back in the 30s and 40s and would always go to work in a shirt, tie and jacket, put an overall on, do what he needed to do and go home, get dressed, undressed, washed up, ready for dinner and put another shirt and tie back on. So that was my upbringing in terms of looking at that. That obviously fed down to my father. And then just because looking at that all of my life, I picked that up from my dad too. So yeah, shoes were always a key thing. Yeah. And watches, because my granddad said, you can always tell a man by his wristwatch and his shoes. Right, um, we can agree with that. <laughs> and looking at your shoes today and some of the watches that you're gonna be showing us, that has clearly been passed on from generation to you're, generation. You're very kind. So obviously that started when you were a boy. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, with all the lovely things that you're having here today, your wardrobe has expanded. How did this lead to ignore your peril? Where did that start? Right, it's a long story that I'll try and keep short. Okay. Um, <laughs> a, a key thing is, yeah, uh, shoes, watches, nice things, scrimped and saved to get those. And then we came across a tie maker out of Italy. And there's quite a few of us gentlemen that liked the look of this vintage cloth that he was saying that he was able to lay his hands on. So we bought uh, some of this cloth and got them made up. It transpires that they weren't as vintage as we first thought. So when on questioning, we learned that, um, yes, there's something amiss here. So we sent certain messages and we got blocked down on social media so we couldn't actually get to the gentleman in question. So completely off the bat, I set up uh, an Instagram account called Ignore At Your Peril because he was ignoring every other channel of communication. So from completely nothing, an Instagram account was born. I didn't touch it for a year or two, and then just posted a couple of uh, shoe pictures on there. And I suppose the rest is history, and it's just a window into what I'm about. So from humble origins, here we yeah. are now. In a lot of your videos as well, you have covered your wristwatches. So I know we have a few here today, but where did that journey start for you? Where did the watch collecting journey begin? I think the important thing was my dad and my granddad saying to me about wristwatches and shoes, it's easier to look after shoes really well uh, and make an average pair of shoes look really smart uh, and a good pair of shoes look really, really smart by looking after them particularly well and they'll outlive me. With regards to wristwatches, it's a little bit more of an expense. So for me, it's about getting the right wristwatch for the right time and one that's gonna last me a lifetime. So I'm not one for having a huge collection of many things and in particular, wristwatches. So for me, it's all about important parts in my life where it became a time when I was ready to buy another wristwatch. We've discussed menswear and we've discussed what got you into watches, but let's go right back to the very start. Which watch here was the first addition to your collection? The first proper watch for me is the Oris. What inspired you to buy this one personally? Why did you choose this watch? I chose this watch quite simply because of one thing. Um, I was fascinated by wristwatches and had numerous different ones or styles which never really scratched or got my itch going until I saw this one, read up a little bit about it. The one thing being it was automatic. I just wanted an automatic watch. It was as simple as that. Um, yeah, I was relatively young and I thought, okay, it's quite a lot of money, but it sang to me because of the way that that looks yeah. in terms of, you know, just everything about it and the date. It has a lot of features that watch collectors love, so it has sort of this fluted bezel effect, which is of course very famous from a selection of other brands that may use a fluted bezel. But I really like the fact that you paired this on a NATO strap as well, because obviously this being issued as a pilot's watch has sort of that military feel to it, and adding it on a NATO strap really tops off that military look in my opinion. So if you don't mind me asking, not being too personal, no. how young were you when you bought that watch? I'm gonna guess, hoping that you wouldn't ask me that, I'm gonna guess, <laughs> 
that I was probably in my early 20s, so... So you bought it two weeks ago? Hey! Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I'm thinking when I was about 22, 23, something wow. of that. Ilk, uh, a little bit of more um, spare income at the end of the week, yeah. stroke month. So put a little bit away, went in and managed to, to get it. Interesting that you make, make the mention about the, the NATO strap. Um, yeah, it's had numerous straps on it. Yeah. Um, it's, had a, it's had a really nice original um, brown leather, yeah. some sort of exotic animal strap on it. And I've still got the original buckle. Oh, fantastic. Um, I knew enough to keep that. Yes. So if I can pick another one up again, I might. But yeah, putting the NATO strap on makes this for me yeah. something of a, a watch that you can just put on any time. Yeah. And I can just swap out the colours as well if I wish. So moving on to the next watch, this is going to be a personal favourite of ours. This is a blue Oyster Perpetual date. Now, fans of what's on watches absolutely love a blue dial Rolex. I really like the configuration you've got with this as well. You've got the rather sporty Oyster bracelet, you've got the domed bezel. What was the next step? What inspired you to go out and buy a Rolex? Well, with, with this one in particular, I'd always been a fan of Rolex and always listened to something of a debate between do we want to go the Rolex route or should we go somewhere else? But for me, because of the brand and whether I bought into marketing or not, I don't know. But I wanted something that was classy. I wanted something that I could wear day in, day out. And I wanted something like these other two that I could wear forever and ever and ever. Something that was going to be timeless. And I felt this hit the nail on the head, particularly with the blue face, yep. date. Um, and this was for a special occasion. I got oh. this for my 40th birthday. I know that's hard to believe. I got this for my 40th birthday, <laughs> so yeah. Now, this last watch is the most interesting to me. You know, we've, we've had a look at these two, we see always perpetual dates, but this one is so left field. It's very, very different to everything else you've got in your collection. Talk to me about this watch. Yes, um, yeah, the Radomir Panerai. Uh, really like this one, the Black Seal. I believe this to be a, a 183G, and I think yeah. there's a difference. There's another yeah. 183, yeah. which is something about the logo. Now, I'm trying to sound in your world as if I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but in my world, that's only because some people pointed it out to me that there is a difference, and I believe it's because the, it, the configuration on the dial was, right. was, was yeah. slightly different. But yeah, I got into Panerai in terms of looking at it, looking at the history, and then I went along to have a look at one, and then it just burnt away at me for a number of days, weeks, and months. And when I picked it up and looked at the back, yes. that was it. Yeah, that, that was it. And I suppose ultimately, and I'm interested, really interested to hear your views on it, when I wear that, I'm not going to wear it with a with a with a suit because you know shirts and and suit j sleeves don't really work across such a big thing. But you can wear it quite quite often. But it's because I know what it's about and it's important to me. So it's an important step within within my sort of wristwatch collection, which is small but very much cherished by me. It's manual, so I like it for that reason. And yes, sometimes I'll just turn it over and have a look. And if somebody shows an interest. I will show them the back yeah. and then they get it too. But equally, if somebody doesn't know watches, then it flies right underneath their radar. Yeah. So it's not going to get picked out by everybody. So we brought some watches here with us today. And what we'd really like to know, <laughs> what we'd really like to know is, if you were adding to your collection, which of these watches would you choose? Now, just as a bit of a run through, we've got a very beautiful 1970s Vacheron Patrimony. We have a wonderful Breitling uh, 815 long playing. We've got a fantastic second execution Carrera, a 5513 Submariner, and the classic 16233 Bicolor Datejust. Now, which one of these really jumps out to you? Um, I'll take the lot. Okay, fantastic. We'll wrap up here, lads, we're done. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the lot. I do like the Vacheron, the driver's one. Yes, uh, yeah. That is a personal favourite of mine. I have seen it in the flesh and survived. Um, <laughs> and I didn't go to the local hospital and ask them to take out a kidney, but it, it, was, it went through my mind. The style of that watch is quite similar to your Panerai as well, with that cushion case. It is. And, uh, if I was trying to be reasonable, that would be why I wouldn't get it, because I feel as, as though I've got it. I can be unreasonable like the yeah. best man. Yeah. In terms of what you brought along today, I'm just completely fascinated. Each and every one's got a huge amount of merits for me okay. and would tick loads and loads of boxes. Um, I'm interested to hear 
what are the key things for you? What jumps out at me, not being as knowledgeable as you gentlemen are, would be the sub. Okay, so this is a 5513 Submariner, one of the longest running references from Rolex. And this is actually one of the very last 5513, so this is a late 80s model. So it carries a lot of that vintage charm, but it also has some of the uh, more modern qualities as well. So this one has a gloss black dial, but something we were actually talking about a little bit earlier on before the camera started rolling, the really unique thing with this watch is the patina. Mm -hmm. So we've already discussed a little bit about Loom when discussing your Panerai and obviously the use of radium initially that Panerai used on the uh, Radomir, but then as radium is, you know, quite dangerous and mm -hmm. eventually will yeah. result in death, the watch industry started using tritium. So this has a tritium dial, it also has tritium hands and a tritium bezel loom pip. So tritium is still radioactive, but not as dangerous as radium. Right. And over time with exposure to UV rays, it starts to go this really nice yellowy pumpkin color, which means which makes every single watch unique and individual. And that's why Patina is very sought after with collectors. Which makes them ultra collectible because each one is... Exactly that. It's okay. like an original jacket. If somebody discontinues a jacket that's incredibly popular, yeah. eventually over time they less become available yeah. and they become more sought after. And it's exactly the same with these watches. Yeah. And I think adding a diver's watch, I know obviously the, uh, the Panerai has some diving background, but a true diver's watch, this is such an iconic style, I think that'd slot really nicely into your collection. I'll take it. Okay, great. <laughs> so, Nigel, a massive thank you for letting us come here today and thank you very much for showing us your watch collection. It's been fantastic. And congratulations on this beautiful new store. If people want to find you, where do they need to go? Well, firstly, it's my pleasure. <laughs> You're always very welcome. The key thing is, if you want to come down and see us, it's ignore at your peril on Instagram is the easiest thing. Direct messages. We do appointments during the week and we're open Friday, Saturday and Sundays. All, all encompassing, so it's just not new, but of the highest calibre, much like this, which I'm hoping to keep. <laughs> and make sure, if you're looking for a new vintage watch, that you head on over to whatsonwatches.co.uk, where all the watches you've seen today, bar Nigel's, are available for purchase. Thanks very much for your time, and we'll see you soon.